Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Welcome once again to our online worship service. I'm so excited today because as we all know, the whole world is celebrating Valentine's Day. Well, this is one question that a lot of people are asking. As Christians, should we celebrate Valentine's Day? Well, whenever I am asked questions like this, my first reaction is, well, what does the Bible say anyway? Obviously, the Bible does not say anything in particular about Valentine's Day because this celebration only started in the 1300s. According to Wikipedia, this celebration is held in remembrance of St. Valentine of Rome, who was a Catholic priest known for his love for God and his love for people. So, should we celebrate? My answer is, why not? So far, my husband has never missed giving me flowers on Valentine's Day through the year, so I am loving it. I would like to speak to you on a message about love. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our theme for today is the greatest commandment, love God and love others. Matthew 22, verse 34 to 40. Hearing what Jesus had, that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the law and the prophets hang on to these two commandments. Allow me to give you a background of the text. This was the time when Jesus was becoming popular and more and more people were following him. That time, there were two groups of Jewish religious leaders who were very much against. They were in opposition of Jesus. So they were the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Both of these groups were interrogating Jesus and they were trying to trap him by asking him difficult questions. So ito pong mga Saduceo at Pariseo ay mga kontra kay Jesus. At sinusubukan nila siyang bitagin, kaya tinatanong siya ng mga mahihirap na katanungan. So the Sadducees were asking Jesus about resurrection. And indeed, Jesus silenced them with his answers. Now it was the Pharisees' turn. And one of the scribes or one of the lawyers tested Jesus with the question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? In the law. You see, the Pharisees were the experts of the law during that time. Out of the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses, they documented more than 600 laws that expounded the Ten Commandments into more specific details. So halimbawa, isa sa mga sampung utos ay keep the Sabbath day holy. So, simple lang sana yung utos, kailangang magpahinga sa araw ng pahinga. Pero ginawang komplikado ng mga pariseyo ang batas dahil nagtalaga pa sila ng iba pang mga batas gaya ng so kung magpapahinga, ilang hakbang lang ang pwede mong lakarin o gaano kabigat lang ang pwede mong buhatin. So, since the Pharisees knew these laws very well by heart, they were testing Jesus as to which commandment he is going to choose as the greatest of all. Now, whatever Jesus chooses, most likely they will have follow-up questions to debate with him. Kasi nga, sinusubukan siyang siraan. Now, contrary to what the Pharisees were expecting, Jesus did not choose anyone from the Ten Commandments. Instead, Jesus quotes what was said in Deuteronomy, 
which states the general instructions that God gave to the nation on how they were supposed to live. It is called the Shema. So the response of Jesus was, it's found in Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, he quoted, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And then Jesus added and combined the last part of Leviticus 19 verse 18. It says there, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So Jesus took all of the laws, all of the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses, all of the 613 laws that the Pharisees documented, everything that religion of that day required, and Jesus summarized them into two. Love God and love your neighbor. So the one thing, the most important thing, the top priority according to Jesus is to love God and to love others. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, church, despite of what the world tells us, life is not about acquisition or how much we get. Life is not about accomplishment or how much we do. Life is not about achievement or how much we earn. But the reason why God put us on this earth is so that we could learn how to love. This is our greatest priority in life. And, do, and nothing that we do is more important than loving God and loving others. Amen. Hallelujah. So for today... I only have two main points, and we will only make it very simple. Love God, love others. Okay, so let's go to point number one. Love God. Again, in verse 37, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, the question is, how are we supposed to love God? Now, Jesus did not tell us to love God with just some of our heart or a little bit of our soul or a part of our mind or some of our strength. Instead, Jesus tells us to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. You see, many times we fall into the trap of compartmentalizing or compartmentalizing our lives. Madalas po kasi hinahati-hati natin ang buhay natin sa iba't ibang mga kompartamento. So we say, okay, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, this is my, this is my work. And then before I go home from work or from school, this is my time for my friends. And then this is for TV, Facebook, and video games. And then Saturday is for my family. And this little hour like here on Sunday mornings is for God. And then a part down here is for church activities. And so we divide our time and attention into different rooms. Now what happens is that we do very little or no connection at all between those different compartments. Ang nangyayari po, kapag trabaho, trabaho lang. Kinakalimutan na ang Diyos. Kapag barkada, barkada lang. Wala nang kinalaman sa Diyos. But that is not how Jesus wants us to live. You see, Jesus calls us to love God with all that we are. All of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. You see, Jesus calls us to integrate or include God in all parts of our lives. So wherever you are and whatever you do, God should always be the center of our focus. Whether you are at work, 
whether you are at school or with your family or with your friends, God should not be put away or left aside. But instead, God should always be the main attraction. Church, this is the greatest commandment that Jesus tells us. There is no room for divided affection, no room for divided allegiance when it comes to God. God wants all that we are and all that we have. Amen. Now, Jesus also calls us to love God more than anything else, more than anything. This can be shown through our service and our devotion. So who or what are you serving the most? Who or what are you devoting your time, your effort, and your resources the most? Who or what is the master of your life? Sino at ano yung sinasabihan natin na hahamakin ang lahat masunod ka lamang? Isipin at pag-aralan po nating mabuti kung sino-sino at ano-ano yung mga prinapriority ng buhay natin. Dahil kung sino at anuman yun, ibig sabihin siya o yun ang Diyos natin. You see, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. And by doing, I mean, or you will be, sorry, Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So once again, remember church that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God. And by doing this, we need to love God with all that we are. And we need to love God more than anything else. Amen po ba mga kapatid? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to main point number two. Love others again in verse 37 jesus replied love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself now to understand what jesus is teaching first we have to ask who is my neighbor if you're asking that question, you're not the first one to ask. In fact, it was this very same lawyer who asked this question. But it's not found in Matthew. We'll have to go over to the book of Luke, chapter 10, to find the answer to that question. So in Luke's version of the story, in Luke chapter 10, verse 29, let's look at the lawyer's response. He said, but he, willingly to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Now, Jesus never answered this question. Instead, he told them a parable, and this was the parable of the Good Samaritan. The parable of the Good Samaritan is one of the most well stories in the Bible. And so to refresh us a bit about the story, let's all watch this video. God's story, the Good Samaritan. So part of God's story is about a Good Samaritan, and it goes like this. When Jesus lived on earth, he often told stories to teach us things. Stories that teach a lesson are called parables. One day, Jesus told a parable about a good guy from a place called Samaria, a Good Samaritan, to a group of Jewish people. It all started when a Jewish expert in the law asked Jesus, what must I do to receive eternal life? Basically, he was asking, what do I have to do to be perfect? Since this guy was an expert in the law, he thought he already knew how to be perfect because he knew all the rules. He just wanted to see what Jesus would say. Of course, Jesus knew what the man was thinking, so he asked him, what is written in the law? The man said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus answered him by telling this story. 
A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Everybody listening was Jewish, and they could probably all picture the exact road Jesus was talking about. He continued, A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. You might expect a priest who was supposed to serve God to help, but he didn't stop. Then Jesus said, a Levite came to the place and saw him, but he passed by on the other side too. Levites were assistants to priests, so maybe you'd expect them to help too, but he didn't stop either. Finally, Jesus said, a Samaritan came along. Remember, a Samaritan is a person from Samaria. That's near Israel, where God's family, the Jews, lived. But here's the thing, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along. In fact, nobody hearing this story would ever expect a Samaritan to help because Samaritans and Jews couldn't stand each other. But Jesus said, when the Samaritan saw the man and took pity on him, he went to him and bandaged his wounds. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out money and gave it to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will pay you back for any extra expense you have. Then Jesus asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law didn't even want to say the word Samaritan, but he admitted the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. In other words, go and love everyone, even people we don't like or people who everybody else wants to avoid. See, when we show love, we're obeying Jesus. Obeying God doesn't mean just doing what his rules say. It means loving him more than anything and showing his love to every single person that we meet. And that's the story of the Good Samaritan. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. A man asked Jesus how to get eternal life. Jesus said, what is written in the law? The man said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then the man asked, who is my neighbor? Jesus told a story. If you miss Jesus' story, here's the quick, quick version. A Jewish man got beat up. A priest walked by. A priest assistant passed by. A man from Samaria actually did help. That was a surprise. Jesus had taught them, we obey God when we show love. And that's part of God's story. Amen. Hallelujah. So that was the story of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, looking back, what did this good Samaritan do? There were seven specific things that this man did. Now let's go over the verses and read them. It's Luke 10, 35, I mean 33 to 35. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil in the wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have so again what did the samaritan man do so first and most importantly the god the good samaritan had compassion on this man this is the key to the whole passage and it was the immediate cause of everything else he did now i'll say more about compassion in my conclusion later on so let's move on for now second he went to the wounded man the others, the priest and the Levites, went to the other side of the road to avoid him. The Good Samaritan wasn't ashamed or afraid or concerned about what others might think about going to help this man. Now third, what he did is he bound up his wounds with olive oil or with oil and wine. There are over 600 references of oils for medicinal purposes in the Bible. Now, each of these oils had healing properties for various uh, injuries or ailments. 
Now, Jesus didn't really say what kind of oil the Good Samaritan added to the wine, but most travelers during that time carried a little first aid kit in case of accidents or illness along the journey. Now, he poured wine being 7 to 15 percent alcohol was an effective antiseptic to kill germs and as an antiseptic to dull pain or anesthesia, anesthetic to dull the pain. Okay, so this is what the Samaritan uh, did. Now, fourth, the Good Samaritan sent, set the man on his own beast. So in Luke, it says it's probably a donkey, which means he had to, re he had to walk for the rest of the journey. And then number five, he brought him to an inn. And then sixth, he took care of him overnight. And then seventh, he gave money to the innkeeper to pay for room and board while he recuperated. And the Samaritan promised to pay extra cost in a return visit or on his return visit. So church, based on the answer of Jesus, who is our neighbor whom we should love? How are we to love our neighbor? You see, the answer is our neighbor is that person who is in need. Whether he is like us or not. You see, some of the people who are in need, to name a few, are the battered wife or the emotionally abused husband. A person in need is a verbally abused child or the grieving parent or the heartbroken divorcee. It could be the sick, the handicapped, the aged, the homeless, the defeated, the humiliated, the alienated, the discouraged, the financially broken, or the orphan, or the beggar. These are all our neighbor. God calls us to love all of this. But how are we to love them? So examining the Good Samaritan's response, some words came to my mind. First is the word compassion. Compassion is not the same as pity. Magkaiba po yung compassion sa awa. Because pity or awa is mere emotion. But compassion does something about what you are feeling. Compassion compels action. Now, second is the word commitment. Luke tells us that the Samaritan moved toward the wounded man and not away from them like the religious leaders did. You must move toward people in order to love them. If you keep people away from you, then love does not happen. So it involves commitment. It involves engagement. Sometimes people who are even outside your comfort zone. So the Samaritan was moving towards someone who would even despise him if he were conscious, if he knew who he was. But that did not stop him from helping the man. Now, third is the word care. He did whatever he could do to help this man. He couldn't do everything because he wasn't a doctor. He had no expertise in the healing arts. And even his time was limited. But for some reason, he still helped the man. He, although he had other needs, he still did what he could, and that was enough. 
And the third, I mean the fourth or the last word is the word cost. The Samaritan paid a cost of time and a cost of money to help this wounded victim. You see, church, loving is never without cost. There is a cost of time and there is often a cost of money. But there is no such thing as a costless love. By its nature, it's sacrificial. And so, church, as we end this message today, may God help us to live out the kingdom calling of the great commandment. May we strive to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, and all of our mind. And may we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Church, when the opportunity presents itself today or this week to love on someone, take it. Show true compassion. Engage with the person in need rather than avoid him or her. Care for their need in so far as you are able to be willing to pay some cost in time and or in money to help them. Remember what John chapter 13 verse 34 and 35 said. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as i have loved you so you also must love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another amen hallelujah and so as we end this message shall we all bow down in prayer and ask god to teach us more on how to love him and how to love our neighbor as ourselves. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word today. Thank you for reminding us the one true thing by which we are called, that is to love you more than anything, and to love our neighbors, especially those who are in need. Lord, may you forgive us for our selfishness, May you forgive us from our indifference. May you forgive us for our lack of sympathy and concern to others. Father, as we apply what we have learned today, we ask the Holy Spirit to convict and move us. May we hear your audible dictation on what we should think, on how we should speak, on how we should act towards you and towards our fellow men, O oh Lord. Father, this Valentine's and Family Day, may love feel the atmosphere. May we not only feel your love, but may we also show our love to you in deeds and in actions, O oh Lord. May we receive and at the same time give love to others, to our families, to our friends, to our church, and to our community. May our light shine and may our actions reflect the love that comes from you, O oh Lord, today and for the rest of the week and even forevermore. Lord, until we come together again in our virtual fellowships, be with us and guide us, O oh Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Everything is yours, so God. Our love, our praise, and our adoration. And so, Lord, this we pray with thanksgiving and with humble hearts in the sweet, sweet name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.